Hey y'all, this is Brad Lancaster, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond and the website HarvestingRainwater.com. Hey, I wanted today to show you how you can maximize the capacity of your rainwater tanks. Today is a perfect day because it's been raining all week. The tanks are full and overflowing. So oftentimes when people see those tanks overflowing, they're thinking, I should have a bigger tank or tanks. Yeah, that's something to think about. But how can you maximize the capacity of your tanks that you have right now? or the tank that you can afford right now. So uh, let me change the point of view of this camera, uh, give you, orient you to the site, and then I'll show you a number of ways that we are maximizing our capacity. Here's the garage. Collect the water off that roof in the gutter, goes down, and then we come here. and see, there's the tanks, two 1,000 gallon rainwater tanks. Um, let me just orient you a little bit more. Come here. Okay, collect water off that roof. There's a gutter back there that then drains onto this roof, comes off into this and into the tanks. Okay, first way you can maximize your capacity of tanks is utilize your overflow as a resource and direct that to the highest part of your property from which you can disperse that water to all points below, thus maximizing the surface area that can be freely irrigated by your overflow. Now that's the low point. That's where I all too often see people send their, their overflow. Wasted, missed opportunity. So here we're sending it to the high point. Now, it then runs behind the fence there and it's overflowing right there. You see it overflowing right now, a nice puddle of water. Okay, so all that water then will uh, be infiltrated here, utilized by this vegetation. Should this basin fill, which it has in the past and it's designed to do, it will overflow to this basin, okay? After it is irrigated this white sapote and much understory vegetation below it, it can then overflow from this point to this basin where we have the citrus tree. Should it overflow, it overflows to that basin. Should it overflow, it overflows back there, okay? So multiple opportunities of overflow where that overflow is used as a resource because we are directing it to the high part of the property, not the low point where we can't utilize it as much. Okay, next step. We are utilizing that rainwater all the time, even during the rainy times. Now you don't have to irrigate much when it's raining, but I can wash my hands, I can shave, I can do dishes, which I do, because this sink is for my outdoor kitchen. Actually, this is my soul kitchen, because it feeds my soul and I love to be outside, and by having it outside, it gets me there. So, um, this faucet is rainwater, gravity fed, from these tanks. So as long as there's water above the level of that faucet, I can utilize rainwater via that faucet. Now, should we have a drought year or someone such as myself mistakenly leaves the water flowing, maybe while watering a plant and I empty my tanks, I do have a backup of city water here, should it be needed. But I only use that as a backup. Um, so my main use is the rainwater, okay? And by using that rainwater to shave, you know, wash, so forth, I'm dropping the level in the tanks, even during the rainy times, thereby making more capacity for more water to fill, okay? And uh, thus I get more capacity out of my tanks. Now, uh, what happens if I want to use rainwater after the water levels get below that faucet? Okay, I have a lower access via this hose um, and I can still do dishes. I grab that washing um, tub and can do them here if I like, okay? Or I got the city backup option. Multiple options, okay? The, uh, and look at the flow of that gravity fed rainwater. It's more flow than it got of the city water. So sweet. Okay, but that water, it is not wasted because it goes down this pipe, okay? Which is to my gray water system. And I, right here, after the water comes 
down the pipe through the P-trap. The reason you have a little P-trap and the one-way vent there is you never get any odors um, coming up through the sink drain. Odors that might happen from you know gray water uh, in the pipe or some kitchen smeg <laughs> that's uh, sitting in the pipe before it washes out. Okay, now here I have a double L um, or a uh, little two-way um, flow splitter. And uh, this enables me to direct the flow to multiple points, okay? And I have a little cork cap here. So should this ever get clogged, I can um, stick my finger or a wire hook in there and remove the clog. The, uh, the water then drains along the pipe here. I'm gonna turn this back on so you can see the water flowing out at different points. Okay, and just wait a second for that flow to make it. And now it's starting to come out. You see it coming out there? Okay, and then that goes in the root zone of the fruit producing dragon fruit cactus, the cucumber flavored uh, and hummingbird attracting flowered chuparosa and more uh, beneficial vegetation. Then drain here to another point, okay? for the Santa Cruz Ruelia and this flowering vine. And let me show you the other side, whoops. Just remember I said the flow split two ways, there and there. Here it comes down, runs all along the fence line, along the property fence. And I have different gray water outlets going here to the Snapdragon vine here to the red justicia and the queen's wreath vine, edible tuber roots and leaves and flowers. And then there to another snapdragon vine, goes here. All right, and then here it goes to the clematis vine. And then another, another snapdragon vine. Okay, and then at the end to the yellow orchid vine, okay. Pretty sweet. Now you don't have to have that pipe exposed in the air. Could be in the ground under a raised path. But I'm keeping it high because the whole thing works with gravity. So the higher I keep that pipe from the get-go, the longer the run I can have to disperse that gray water to more points. Because you need to maintain a quarter inch, minimum quarter inch uh, drop for every linear foot of pipe so that the water and whatever it's carrying is always moving through that pipe not sitting in the pipe now how do you figure that out well my books especially this one show you how but i'll just show you real quick you can get this uh little inspector level um and it has if you look here Okay, there, basic level like you're accustomed to. But here, you can see the little bubble here. Okay, so this is close to level, but um, notice the edge of the bubble's now at a quarter. That's a quarter inch, quarter inch drop per foot. Okay, more info on that in my book. What is going on? Why does this keep blurring up? Okay, sorry, I think I had water on my lens. That book's got a lot more info along with my website, harvestingrainwater.com. Check out the Gray Water Harvesting page. Okay, so I am maximizing use of overflow water. I'm using the water to do dishes, wash my face and so forth, capturing that lightly used gray water back within the landscape. Let's go further. Okay, I can also then drink the rainwater. Now, um, I have this little water filter here. Just to play it extra safe, I filter my water a little extra. So I'm gonna drink that. Ooh. Yum. Okay. Sweet water. Okay, 
so let's see how this uh, this Berkey uh, gravity fed activated carbon filter works for my filtered rainwater. So I can just grab a little pot here, fill it with the unfiltered rainwater from the cisterns, fill the pot, and then I pour it in here. Okay, and I'll do that a few times till it's filled up. These are two activated carbon filters, micron filters, so the water uh, must go through those very small pores, and then uh, once uh, it goes through that, it's collected in the bottom. So there you go, got the filtered water in there, and then I can access it through that faucet. Okay, so uh, that takes care of um, the lead issue, uh, any microorganisms, whatnot. So I, um, I get all my drinking water uh, from my roof via these tanks and after it passes through this filter. I also get all my cooking water uh, with this. So I'm only filtering my drinking water and my cooking water. For washing my hands, face, body, I'm just using the rainwater that uh, comes right out of the tap from the cisterns. Now, there are a number of ways that I passively filter the water before it gets to this faucet. Uh, you can check out um, my books, especially volume one and uh, another video for more info on that. But let's look at some other ways that I'm maximizing the capacity of the, my rainwater tanks. Uh, so what are some other ways I can use the water in the tanks, even during the rainy time, to make more uh, capacity in those tanks? Okay, well, another real simple thing is um, here on my, my mirror, my windows, uh, I will just, uh, I, I don't buy any Windex or anything. I just um, wet the cloth with the rainwater, rainwater which is naturally soft, um, and just wipe down the the mirror or the glass okay and once that dries um, I won't have any um, uh, you know spots on the glass or whatnot because rainwater is naturally soft there is uh, no salt you know minerals in it so it doesn't leave those water spots okay um, <laughs> and thus rainwater is also great as a natural hair conditioner so here's uh, my outdoor bathtub and shower have a curtain that goes around that uh, for privacy but uh, I shower with rainwater and thus I don't need any hair conditioner because the rainwater is natural hair conditioner now I like to set my stuff up pretty simple so anybody can do it uh, anywhere no matter what their budget okay this is my little shower bucket so what I can do up here is I can remove this and I can fill it with rainwater for my cisterns so how would I do that? Well, I would lift this up and I would carry it over to where I can fill it from the hose there, okay? Then I rehang it up and I'm all ready to go. So I've got it set up here so that under here, I've got a little valve and there's my shower, okay? It's just a little PVC cap with a bunch of little holes drilled in it. Okay, so I've got this where I can um, sit there. Uh, you don't wanna lift a heavy bucket full of water too high. So I set it up so I don't have to bend over while I'm in the shower. I can just sit on there and all is good. And then the gray water from this shower then goes to purple pipe in this case to a little flow splitter so um, half goes to the citrus tree half goes to the white sapote okay so using the water gray water again multiple ways but by showering with that rainwater I'm again making capacity in the tanks even during the rainy time to get more water what are some other ways oh and you, got, you can make it convenient. For some of you who are like, yeah, I do don't want, don't want to carry a bucket. You could do a, a tank, you know, with pumps and stuff, but I don't want that cost and energy consumption. Um, and in the drought times, 
should everything run out of water, I do have backup of city water here, okay? But let's look at something else. Okay, here I have got um, two evaporative cooler pads, a piece of new cooler pad and an old one from my rental unit uh, that has city water going through the evaporative cooler. Well, I use rainwater only in my evaporative cooler. So I never get the salt buildup. I mean, look at a new pad and look at how clogged up this is with salts and minerals from our city water, which is really high in salt and getting higher all the time as we're importing ever more Colorado River water from the Central Arizona project, which is much saltier than our groundwater and which is also salting up our groundwater since we're artificially recharging our groundwater with that Colorado River as well. Okay, so by uh, using rainwater in my evaporative cooler instead of city water, uh, that's another way I can consume water even during the rainy times when I got the cooler on. Sorry about the train noise in the background, but hey, that's just the flavor of our neighborhood. Um, and I never have to replace a pad. So let's go up to see where that evaporative cooler is. Go up my little ladder. There's the rain water um, evaporative cooler because I only put rain water to it. Now this, this cooler pad, it is uh, 11 years old. I've never had to replace it, okay? It's looking a little worn because this gets hit by the morning sun because behind me there is east. <laughs> so it's degraded a bit from the sun, but not at all from salts. There is no salt accumulated on there. Works pretty damn sweet. And uh, this is a little solar powered uh, evaporative cooler too. Solar chill. Um, local guy, Bill Cunningham, designs and builds these. Um, so you can check him out, solar chill. Okay, let me go back down. Okay, I've come back down and I uh, wanna show you yet another way I can use that tank water uh, during the rainy times. So let's say we get uh, yeah, a few days of real hot, sunny weather between rainstorms. Well, I can still, you know, water the plants and whatnot. So use the hose to do that. Um, I've got my more tender, needy plants, you know, close to the kitchen and my front door. Uh, make that real convenient for me because the key is to make everything convenient, joyous to use uh, and whatnot, uh, and to uh, conserve even more water. I, when I turn this on, I have these little underground ollas or pots. The only hole in the pot is the very top. Oops, hard to do this one-handed. Um, and so then the water wicks through the clay pot into the root zone of the plants. So instead of a surface watering, it's a subsurface watering. You use, lose less water to evaporation. And one more conserving strategy is uh, when I don't wanna use as much water in the sink, I can use my little tippy tap. So, got this little bottle here with the string on it. The string goes down to this little foot pedal. So when I put my foot on that, water comes down. Instead of a crazy flow, I just have a trickle flow, which is more than enough to wash one's hands while using way less water. And to come full circle, something I mentioned before when I showed how good this flow is of the rainwater, well, the key is, is to use a full port valve. Notice how there's no obstruction at the gate of the valve. Maintain the full aperture or opening of the pipe, okay? Whereas the typical faucet, let me see if I can get the light here. Okay, can you see in there? See how the gate, it constricts down to 25% of the original aperture so when you have these regular faucets or spigots, um, not the full port one like I just showed you, the, uh, and especially when your tank's low in water, water flow is dramatically reduced by the surface friction of this. So you can get more information on full port valves by searching full port valve on my website, harvestingrainwater.com. And uh, you can get more info in my books as well. You can get these direct from me at deep discount at my website, harvestingrainwater.com.